Yeah, 3.7, finding common denominators. Now, finding common denominators, um, well, I, I like the way that is, this is at least put because it's not saying least common denominators, or at least it's not required to. So, in the, in the homework, we'll be required to find least common denominators, but when you're operating on fractions, specifically with addition and subtraction, it's not required that you find the lowest common denominator. So a lot of people think that you do have to find the lowest common denominator. That's not true. We just need any common denominator to com um, before we add or subtract fractions. And common denominators really come from least common multiples. Now this is this is pretty crucial because generally speaking we usually well yeah we we usually use multiplication to find lowest or any common denominator for that matter. Now there there's a pretty easy method but there's we we also have these methods as well. So right now just as we're finding least common multiples just keep in mind that the process of finding least common multiples is actually the process of finding common denominators as well. So it looks like we got a couple options. Number one, you could make a list of multiples of, of a set of values and then the find, find the earliest one that is common. We'll look at both methods, by the way. Or you could find the prime factorization of both, or if there's sometimes there's three. Identify all common prime factors and the uncommon prime factors and then multiply them all together, which that, that may not make a lot of sense right now, but it hopefully will by the time we finish 3.7. So find the least common multiple of 40 and 35. So we just we just look at these two values, right? And if we use the first method, just making a list of the multiples of both, right? So 40, that would be the first multiple of 40. Okay, now I'm gonna list a few multiples of 40, and then I'm gonna list a few multiples of 35 and see if I can find any matches. It doesn't have to be the same multiple for each. It just, let me rephrase that. It doesn't have to be the same number multiple of each. It just needs to be the same value all right again that that may not make sense well, let me let me expand on that with this okay so 40 is the it is its own first multiple if i added 40 to itself i'd get 80 so that's my second multiple of 40 add another 40 you get 120 add another 40 and you get 160 add another 40 you get 200 and i'll add another 40 here just because Adding 40 is not too bad, right? Now, I've, I've got my calculator open. If if this was some kind of strange value, like if there was 37, all right? I'm just not very familiar with my multiples of 37. I could use the calculator like this, right? So I just type in 35, for example. Let, let's do 35 on the calculator. So 35, of course, that's my first multiple. That's fine. Now you could use multiplication, like you could say I'm going to multiply it by 2 or just add another 35 to it. It doesn't really matter. That gives me my second multiple of 35, which is 70, right? Now if I just added 35 to this, it makes it pretty nice because now on it, my calculator it's showing answer plus 35. So when I push enter, it gives me my third multiple, which is 105. And from here, since it just entered answer plus 35, if I push enter again, it's going to take my new answer and add another 35. So the fourth multiple of it is 140. And my fifth multiple, just push enter again, bam, 175. So I'm going to add another 35 there, 210. And I can see right here, just in my list, I've got my green numbers, which are multiples of 40, and my purple numbers, which are multiples of 35. There aren't any matches between the two. So that means that as of right now, I don't have any common multiples between them, all right? But like I was saying before, 
Well, let, let me finish this actually. So the 240, if I wanted my next multiple, I'd say, well, I'd add another 40 to that. That'd be 280. That's not too bad. Uh, the 210, if I added an, another 35 to it, then I get 245. So it looks like we're getting closer. And if I add another 35 to it, I get 280. All right, now the, the green 280 and the purple 280 match. And I don't have any matches earlier than that. So it looks like my least common multiple for 40 and 35 is 280. Now again, this is, this is using the first method, which may seem kind of inefficient at this point. I mean, using the calculator is nice. It, it makes it easy to find multiples. Um, but after we show using prime factorization for you may choose one or the other oh but but again it it's not that they're the same multiple it's just that they're the same number multiple for both right like 280 it looks like that's the seventh multiple of 40 whereas 280 for 35 is the what is that one two three four five six seven it's the eighth multiple of 35k okay? So it's not that they're the same multiple, it's just that they're the same value for both. Uh, again, I hope that's not super confusing. Again, we're just looking for the same number that's a multiple for both. Yeah, let, let's go over that. So if I wanted prime factorization, right? So I'm gonna look at, I'll, well, let, let's look at 40 first. So the prime factorization for 40. Uh, so again, I'll just start by splitting, I'm gonna use the factor tree for this. Split 40 up into two, just any two factors of it, right? So I I would say 4 and 10. Of course, you could have used a bunch of others. But 4 and 10 worked. Uh, neither of these are prime, so I would just continue to whittle this down until I do get prime numbers, like 2. And 10 splits up into 2 and 5, both of which are prime. So 40 has the prime factorization of 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. All right, well, that that's the prime factorization of 40. But let's look at the prime factorization of 35. Well, 35 really only splits up into 5 and 7, right? Both of which are prime. So I'm going to list those as well, like this. What did I say? 5 and 7? You know, I'm going to... Switch those around, 7 and 5. All right, now, we want to identify any common factors first. Okay, and the only one that I have on this list is 5. Now, since they're common, I'm, in, I'm, I'm only going to list 5 once, all right? So if I wanted my least common multiple... I'm going to list all of my common factors. 5 is itself a common factor. But then I need to list all of my uncommon factors as well. Which is, we got three twos. Now, they need to be common factors between the two numbers. They, they shouldn't be common factors of uh, an individual number. Okay, So that's why I need to list these three twos. All three of them. One two, three, but then the seven from the 35 is also uncommon between the two. Well, if I multiply these out, so I'm going to use my calculator, right? Five times two times two times two times seven. It should give me 280. Bam, there it is. So after multiplying these out, it tells me that my lowest common multiple is 280. Now again, if it you get to decide which which of those two is easier for you, like if if finding the multiples is good, do it. All right, but some of you guys like this prime factorization stuff, and it may have seemed faster, uh, but again, it's it's really up to you to determine which of the two methods you like. Now I, I will say that I mean 40 and 35, I don't know that we'll see a lot of fractions with these types of denominators. Um, 
so sometimes they're just I don't know that they're that either of these methods is necessary. Sometimes we simply scale the fraction um, to find common denominators just because we'll be dealing more with a lot of the times we're dealing more with fractions or numbers that we're familiar with the multiples of. And that's why we, we recommend that you have your, at least your multiplication tables up to 12 memorized. I mean, that being said, the, the calculator is always helpful. So at least common multiples are lowest common denominator. So on a question like this one, where it says find the least common denominator, it gave us those numerators right there, but I'm not actually concerned with the numerators in this. I'm only looking at the denominators, which are 24 and 18. Now you guys just saw the, the two methods, uh, the multiples and also the prime factorization. Let's do the prime factorization then, all right? And then if you guys are like, well, I really do want to see the multiple thing, uh, we can do that too. All right, but just let me know. So let's start with 24, prime factorization, right? So I'll split this up. 24, I would say 6 and 4. And again, you could have used like 12 and 2 or 3 and 8. It doesn't really matter. Because eventually its prime factors are all going to be the same. So 6 and 4. 6 would be, well, I'll say 3 and 2. Both of which are prime. And then 4 splits up into 2 and 2. Which are both prime. So I'll, I'll put the list here in the middle. 24 is prime factors of 3 times 2 times 2 times 2. All right, now 18. 18, I'd split up into 6 and 3. But again, if you said 2 and 9, that, that's fine too. 6 would be, I guess we'll say 3 and 2. Both of which are prime. So I have all the prime factors of 18 at the end of this factor tree. So I'll list those now. 3 times 2 times 3. So I want my um, lowest common multiple, which is going to be the lowest common denominator. And, and again, once we start operating with these, we'll show you another method to find common denominators. It just wouldn't necessarily always be the lowest common denominator. So I need my common multiples, which I've got two common multiples between the two numbers, 24 and 18, which is 3 and 2. Now I, I need to multiply those. But then I need to list any uncommon multiples such as these two twos. And then we also have another three from the 18 that's uncommon. So to figure out what that is, I'm just gonna use the calculator. Three times two times two times two times three. And that gives me 72. All right, so the lowest common multiple is 72 after we multiplied those. So that's the lowest common multiple. That means it would also be the lowest common denominator for both of these. All right, why don't you guys take a minute and see if you can figure out the lowest common denominator for these two fractions, all right? One minute, go. All right, I think that that's about a minute right there. All right, so let's check our work on this, okay? So, um, again, we'll just keep using this prime factorization stuff. And again, I'm since we're only finding the least common denominator, I'm, I'm not worried about the numerators in this case. Eventually, we'll start scaling these fractions, but I'm not worried about it so much right now as just um, the ability to find the least common denominator. So let's start with the 75. All right, well, 75, I would split that up with 3 and 25. But um, if you used 5 and, what would that be, uh, 15, I guess? 
That, that would work too. So 3 is prime. And 25 splits up into 5 and 5. Alright, so I know 75 has the prime factorization of 3 times 5 times 5. But now 60 would split up into, well, I, I guess I'd say 6 and 10. So 6 would split up into 2 and 3, which are both prime. And then 10 splits up into 5 and 2, which are both prime. So I've got all my prime factorization for 60, which is 2 times 3 times 5 times 2. So for my lowest common denominator, it's the same as the lowest common multiple. And that is just simply finding all of the common multiples for both, or common uh, factors, I should say. So I got the threes in common and then the fives in common. So that would be a set of threes. Let me try that again. A set of threes and a set of fives. But then again, we need to list all the uncommon factors, which are five, and then we got this set of twos there, so five, two, and two, which are uncommon factors. So I'll multiply those with the calculator. All right, so the calculator tells us that the lowest common multiple for these two is 300. And that would be our answer that would be considered the least common denominator. All right, what about a problem like this one? Uh, you guys take 30 seconds and try this one out too. Hopefully that was good right there. Now, and hopefully you guys understand how easy a problem like this one is once you know what the denominator of 12 is. Because 12 as a fraction would be 12 over 1. So if we wanted to find the least common denominator, um, well, 1 is, it's kind of like the identity property right here, right, for multiplication. I just know if I multiply 1 by 4, I can easily get a common denominator of 4. What that also means is this denominator, I don't need to switch. I don't need to find multiples of. It by itself, no matter what it is, would always be a multiple of 1. All right, so lowest common denominator on this one, 4. All right, so rewriting fractions with the least common denominators. And um, this is where sometimes it's, it's helpful to have a list of the multiples but again you you can decide so let's see what do we got um, 10 4 and 7 right so we need to find actual the the least common multiple for all three denominators in this case we can't ignore the numerators though because we're go going to actually rewrite the fractions so let's see how we do that okay so I'm gonna start with 10 let's look at 10 and it's prime factors, which would be 5 and 2, all right, both of which are prime. So if I were to list 10, we'll do it over here, its prime factors are 5 and 2. Next up, we'll do 4, which splits up into, <clears throat> excuse me, 2 and 2, uh, both of which are prime. So we got these two. A uh, seven though, here, it by itself is a uh, prime number. So it just is prime. So seven has a prime factor of, well, seven. Yeah, so the least common denominator for these, okay? Now we, it, we just need to find any common factors for any pair. Okay, so even though there's three, we don't really need uh, a common factor for all three of them. As long as there's any common factors between two of them, 
And if there was a common factor for all three, then we would only list it once. Okay, but let me kind of show what that means. So like these twos are common between the 10 and four. They're not common with the seven though. Now, if the seven had a two right here, I would, I would also have that included right there, but it doesn't, so I'm not. So just for my common factors, I would still list two as a common factor, even though it's not a common factor for all three. All right, and this is only necessarily for least common denominators, all right? But now I need to list all my uncommon factors, which would be the five, the two, and the seven. So finding my least common denominator is just as simple as multiplying these four numbers, all right? So we'll use the calculator for that. All right, so my lowest common denominator 140. Now, we, we have this least common denominator, but it's said to rewrite the fractions, right? So if I were to rewrite all three fractions, it's okay to just start with the denominator. We know all three of them should have a denominator of 140. And so at this point, we run into the question of, well, what do we multiply the denominators by to get 140. Well, 10 isn't too bad, right? We should be able to see that anything times 10, right? Because this one ends in a zero. So if I just multiplied it by 14, 10 times 14 would give me 140. Now, remember what we talked about with equivalent fractions, though, which I think was 3.2. Uh, if you multiply the denominator by something, you have to multiply the numerator by the same thing. Otherwise, you'll end up with a new value. So by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same thing, we end up with the same value, but it's, it's it may look a little different, right? So 2 times 14, bam, 28. 1 40th? Ah, well, what about 4, right? Now, if you're not sure what to multiply 4 by, you can just go to the calculator. All you're going to do is you're going to take this new denominator, which is 140, and you're going to divide it by the 4. And that will, that will will that's going to tell me what to multiply 4 by to get 140, right? Now, that'd be 4 times 35. That's what the calculator says. So my 4 times 35 would be 140. So multiply 9 by 35. Let's just do that in the calculator. I've already got the 35, so... Multiply by 9, 315. Uh, and then the 7 looks like we'll have. To, yeah, here we go. So, um, yeah, it, you may, you, and it could be even translated as well, why are we multiplying these by different things? Well, uh, this goes back to the fact that the multiples themselves, or 140 is a different multiple of 10 than it is for four and seven. So even though it is a common multiple for all three numbers, we'll still have to multiply all three numbers by something different to get 140. So that, that's why we end up having to multiply like the 10 by 14 and then the four by 35. It's because we need to, we need to be thinking, what, what do I need to multiply these numbers by to get this new denominator? So for the denominator of 7 right there, we could do the same thing, right? So I know from the calculator that 7 times 20 would be 140. And again, this is what we call scaling the fraction, where if I multiply the numerator and denominator by the same thing, I'm not changing its value. I'm just changing the way that it looks. So 3 times 20 is 60. I'll fix the 6 there. That's better. All right, so this would be all three fractions. Yeah, you could put commas between them if you want. But this is all three fractions with the same denominator, but they've been scaled. Now, some of you guys, again, may be thinking, well, I, I don't really see the necessity of this. It's coming. Okay, we're going to need it in the next lesson. But... Um, 
however you do it. So we, we've continually used prime factorization in this. Again, I don't really care what method you use. And again, technically, that there's a third method once we start operating. But in this lesson on the homework, it's always going to be asking for least common denominators. So I, I just want you guys to keep this in mind. Only common denominators are required for addition and subtraction of fractions, okay? We don't always need lowest common denominators. And again, a, a, one of the biggest misconceptions of common denominators is that you need the least common denominator so you don't have to simplify after you've added or subtracted fractions. Uh, but that's not always true. It It is sometimes, okay? But it's not always true, so... If you could just find common denominators without it being the lowest common denominator, you can still add and subtract and then simplify at the end. Uh, another thing I want you guys to remember with this common denominator stuff, because the first part of this module was really just multiplication and division of fractions. But I, I want you guys to remember that when we were doing multiplication and division of fractions, we did not need common denominators, okay? We only need common denominators for the operations of addition and subtraction.